Hi guys, okay, we have uh, November 2020 to H artist. Make sure you've got the right paper. And here we go. So it says, question one, the probability that a spinner will land on blue is 0 0.4. Rayanne is going to spin the spinner 280 times. An estimate for how many times it will land on blue, right? That is, guys, easy once you know how to do it. It's 280 times 0 0.4 because it's kind of it's going to land on blue 40 percent of the time or 0 0.4 um well that ratio of the time therefore it's this times 0 0.4 which is um calculator do i need a calculator yes i do 280 times 0 0.4 112 112 there we go Question two, write 880 as a product of powers of its prime factor. Show your work in clearly. Okay, so this is an example, guys, where you can't use this, this uh, button here, although you can use it to check your answer. My answer is going to be this. So if I press all right, 880 equals, and then I do shift this button, and I get fact for factors, this is my answer. But I need to show my working. So what he wants is a prime factor tree. So I'm gonna get 880 like this. Then I'm gonna split this up into, um, I'm gonna go with 88 times 10. That's a nice one to do. Then 88 is eight times 11, and 10 is five times two. Now once I get prime numbers like these, I stop and circle them. Circle these two. And sorry, 11 is a prime number, so I'm going to circle that. The eight, though, I can still go into four times two, and two times two. The two is obviously a prime number. So I circle all the primes, and this is what I'm left with. So 880 equals two times two times two, two times two times two, times 11 times five times two. All these numbers multiplied together. But he wants it as a product of powers of its prime factor. So we have to go two to the power of one, two, three, four, times five times 11. And that's the answer because well, I have it here, two to the four times five times one. So this is good to check your answer, but if you just write that down, you'll get no marks. So um, obviously don't do that, show you're working. Okay, write 2.46 times 10 to the power of six as an ordinary number. Now on your calculator, guys, you can do 2.46 times 10 to the power of six, and it gives it to you straight away. Now you should also know how to do this. You, um, you just multiply by, um, well, by a million. It's like this, 2.46. Then we go one, two, three, four. Just put enough zeros here so that when we multiply by 10 to the power of six, we're gonna go, we're gonna move the decimal, the decimal point. One, two, three, four, five, six, and we stop there. So we're stopping there, which means we've one, two, three, four zeros. So this is two, four, six, one, two, three, four zeros. And that is what they have here. Okay, similarly with this one, it's gonna be 7.4, because I have to use, the first number has to be between one and 10, so 7.4. And I'm gonna times 10 to the minus something, and the something I can do same method but go backwards from 7.4. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's 10 to the power of negative 4. Okay, work out this um, plus this. So I can just use my calculator here, guys. It is 5.6 times 10 to the power of 6 plus. Um, plus 2.3 times 10 to the power of 5, which is 5830000400. So it's 
eight, three with four zeros. Now again, guys, there's two marks here. So if you were to actually, if it said show your working, show all your working here, the way it wants you to do it is change this into five, um, sorry, I'm gonna multiply this by 10, 56, this number, and then I'm gonna divide this by 10. So this way I haven't changed the number. 5.6 times 10 to the power of six is the same as 56 times 10 to the power of five. So now it's 56 times 10 to the power of five plus 2.3 times 10 to the power of five. Because they're both times 10 to the power of five, a bit like if they were both x, I can just add them. 56 plus 2.3 is 58.3 times 10 to the power of five which is equal to this, um, 5, 5, 8, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, if you really, really don't know how to do this, guys, write down your answer, but um, it dep depending on the mark scheme, sometimes they don't give you the marks if you don't actually show you're working like this, so just be careful. Um, just to be clear, 58, Point three times 10 to the power of 5 like this is 5830000 like we have here. So you can use your calculator to help you, but again, um, try and show as much working as possible. Okay, question four. Alexa has five cards. Each card has a number on it. Great. The, sorry, these are the cards. These are the, this is the total, the median, the mode, the range. Using this information, um, complete complete each card by writing its number on it. Okay, All right, this is actually tricky. So the mode is five. So we have to have um, we have to have more fives than any other number. Okay, um, because I have to have more fives, I need at least two fives. So I'm gonna put two fives here. Now we're gonna arrange it from smallest to largest because the median is gonna be in the middle. So if the median's in the middle, this has to be eight. So I could have, maybe should have started with that. Eight has to go in here. Because the mode is five, these two both have to be five. They can't be over here because we're arranging it from smallest to biggest. The range is 10, which means this one has to be 15, because biggest minus smallest, 15 minus five, has to equal 10, that is the range. And then finally, the total is 45, so they all have to add up to 45, so I can just go 15, 20, 25, 33, uh, plus what gives me 45, this has to be 12. Okay, kind of a tricky question, but hopefully that makes sense. Okay, question five. The length of a book is this correct to one decimal place? Write down the lower bound of the length of the book um, and then the upper bound, right? I'll just do my line, guys, that I like to always draw. If this is 33.8 to one decimal place, the next number um, to one decimal place is 33.9. And the next number this direction is 33. Point seven, which means the upper bound is halfway between them here, 33.85, and the lower bound is halfway between these two, which is 33.75. Just be careful, this, uh, this question asks for the lower bound, 33.75, and this question asks for the upper bound, 33.85. Obviously, you don't have to do this working again here. In fact, you don't even need to do any more working because they're just one mark each. But I do always recommend drawing out these lines, guys, for the upper and lower bounds. Okay, Nav has worked out this on his calculator. His answer is this. Without using a calculator and suitable approximations, check that his answer is sensible. Show you're working clearly. Okay. Guys, generally, when they ask these types of questions, they want you to round to one significant figure. Otherwise, without a calculator, it would just be 
it would just be too difficult. So we're going to round this to one significant figure. 68.3 to one significant figure is 70, rounds to 70. 42.8 to one significant figure is 40. So that's approximately 70. That's approximately 40. And 0 0.02 to... Um, sorry, to one significant figure is, sorry, 0 0.021 to one significant figure is 0 0.02. Okay, because that's its first significant figure because these are zero. Okay, then I'm gonna multiply the top um, 70 times 40. I can do this because seven times four is 28. So 70 times 40 is 2800 because there's a zero here and a zero here, so that will give me the two zeros. And it's all over 0 0.02. Okay, now this bit's a little bit tricky. I don't like a decimal in the fraction, so I'm going to multiply above and below by 100. That will remove this decimal. So I'm going to do 2800 times 100, add on two zeros, and the numerator times 100 will just be 2, because it's uh, times 10 times 100, gives me 2. So now I have, uh, what is this, 280,000 divided by 2 is 140,000. Now you could actually do that with a calculator and not tell the examiner. But um, that's, my, um, that's my working, and the question says, Check that his answer is sensible. So yes, he's got a prox. He's look. He's got one hundred and thirty nine thousand two hundred one. You've got one hundred forty thousand. So you're almost the same. So you can just write yes. His answer is sensible. Okay, that's question six. Question seven. Marcus makes a steel framework. The framework is in the shape of a right angle a triangle like this. The steel costs $22 per meter. The steel can only be bought in a length that is a whole number of meters. Work out the total cost of the steel that Mark, that Marcus buys in order to make the framework right. Obviously a lot of words, guys, but the key here is we're dealing with the perimeter of the shape. He's talking about um, it's, a f it's a steel framework. So it's like this, this, and this length I want. So definitely, I want to get this length first. How do I get it? Well, right angle triangle. It's either going to be Sokotoa or Pythagoras. I don't have any angle, so it's definitely going to be Pythagoras. So Pythagoras' theorem is x squared equals 4.3 squared plus 6.4 squared. Um, and then you can just go straight to x is the square root of 4.3 squared plus 6.4 squared. I'll do all that on my calculator. You can add another step if you want. This is the square root of 4.3 squared plus 6.4 squared is 7.71. Now I'll round to, I'll round to two decimal places because we're he, he says a whole number anyway, so two decimal places is fine for now. So 7.71. Okay, um, so x is 7.71. Therefore, the perimeter, the perimeter of the triangle, per, perimeter, that's not right, perimeter, what am I doing? Perimeter, that's better. The perimeter, is um, 7.71 plus 4.3 plus 6.4, which is 7.71 plus 4.3 plus 6.4 is this. I will give it as a decimal 18.41, 18.41. He says the steel can only, boldened, um, be bought in 
a length that is a whole number of meters. So the perimeter is 18.4 meters. So I have to buy 19 meters of steel. So I'm going to write therefore, three, three dots for, that's the therefore symbol, 19 times 22 equals, uh, let's do that, 19 times 22 is 418. So it's 418 dollars. Okay, 418. Next question, question eight. Alison buys two boxes of strawberries, box A and box B. 15 strawberries in box A, and the mean is 24. 25 strawberries, and the mean is 18. She puts all 40 strawberries into a bowl, work out the mean weight of the 40 strawberries. Okay, this is a combined mean question. If you've seen these before, guys, they're fine. If you haven't, uh, it's a it's a very tricky question, but hopefully, um, hopefully you have seen them and are, or you have at least practiced some of these types of questions. So, what we're going to do is we're going to say the mean of box A is twenty four. So assume all these fifteen weigh twenty four grams. So I do fifteen times twenty four. That's the total. That's the total uh, weight of the strawberries in box A. Similarly, I assume these 25 strawberries in box B have a weight of 18. So this would be the total weight in box A. This is the total weight in box B. If you recall, the mean, the total mean, is the total weight over the total number of um, bowls. Is it, sorry, is it bowls or boxes? Alison puts all 40 strawberries into a bowl. Um, work out the mean weight of the 40 strawberries. Okay, sorry, it's not the, it's, it just happens to be in box A and box B. So we're, we're trying to find the mean of all the strawberries. So this is the, this is the total weight of strawberries in box A, total weight of stra strawberries in box B. The mean, I'm going to divide by the total number of strawberries, which is 40. So this, um, this should give me 15 times 24. This should give me the mean. Well, it will give me the mean. Um, plus 25 times 18, all over 40, 81.4 or 20.25. So that's the combined mean, the mean of all the strawberries, 20.25 grams, 20.25. Question nine, factorize. Okay. Guys, factors of x squared are x and x. Polite reminder, there's many different ways to factorize these, including using your calculator to, to help you. I'm just gonna show you this one way. x and x for x squared. Factors of 42 are seven and six, which makes sense, because I'm gonna get one here. It's like minus one x. The seven has to be minus, and the six has to be plus because they multiply together to give me negative 42, and they add together to give me negative one. So these are my factors, x minus seven times x plus six. Okay, then it says, solve the inequality, show clear algebraic working. All right, this is, well actually it's not too bad. So I have 3x plus 15 is less than 8x plus 3. I think, guys, I am going to get the x's on the right because um, the 8 is bigger than the 3, so it'll make things easier for me, and the 15 is bigger than this 3. You could get the x's on the left and divide by a negative number, but then you have to switch the arrow. Um, this way I don't have to switch the arrow at all, but... Both ways will, will work and give you the same answer. So 8x minus 3x, I'm subtracting 3x from both sides. And here I'm subtracting 3 from both sides. So in one go, subtract this 3 over here, subtract this um, 3x over here. 15 minus 3 is 12. 8x minus 3x is, sorry, 5x. And x is then great, greater than 12 divided by 5. That's 
fine you can leave it like that or use your calculator that is actually 2.4 so x is bigger than 2.4 okay question 10 given that this equals 1 find write down the value of x right anything guys to the power of 0 is 1 so this is 0 it's only one mark that's why it's quite easy but obviously if you didn't remember that that anything to the power of 0 is 1 that's not an easy question um, here find the value of n okay so it's basically saying do this guys 3 to the power of minus 8 divided by 3 to the power of minus 6 don't let the n confuse you when we divide numbers and the base is the same we subtract the powers so it's minus 8 minus now be careful it's this minus this so it's minus 8 minus minus 6 which is actually equal to use your calculator guys if you don't like negative numbers minus 8 plus 6 which is minus 2 so this equals 3 to the power of minus 2 therefore n equals negative 2 just be careful that's why he's saying 3 to the power of what is equal to this and I've said it's 3 to the power of negative 2 okay so far guys so good it's not a bad question although these ones are often difficult right show by shading on the grid the region that satisfies all three inequalities okay so I'm going to draw three lines I'm going to draw x equals 4 x equals 4 is here so um, on the x-axis so the line x equals 4 is this this is the line x equals 4 I'm going to draw the line y equals negative 2 it's here this is the line y equals negative 2 and then I'm going to draw the line y equals x y equals x is hang on this is that we through there y equals x now he says shade the region that satisfies them all so it has to be less than four so it's going to be over this side it has to be greater than negative two so it has to be above this line and it has to be less x um, sorry y has to be less than x so it has to be down here so this is the region um, and we're gonna we are gonna call it or because he's asked me to call it or let me just make this a bit thicker okay there we go that is the region or question 12 Find the gradient of the straight line with equation 5x plus 2y equals 7, right? So we need to rearrange this equation so it is in the form y equals mx plus c. How do I do that? Firstly, I get the x term over here. So I'm going to subtract 5x. So it's minus 5x plus 7. Then... It can't be in the form 2y equals mx plus c. It has to be y equals mx plus c. So I'm going to divide by 2. Now I'm going to divide everything by 2. Because I divide this, the left side of the equation by 2, and the right side of the equation by 2. When I divide this by 2, it's minus 5x over 2, or 5 over 2x. It's the same thing. Divide this by 2, and divide this by 2. This is then the same as y equals negative 5 over 2x plus 7 over 2. This and this are exactly the same thing. Hence the gradient, the gradient, I'm going to use the letter m, equals minus 5 over 2. Um, or minus 2.5. Okay, question 13. The diagram shows four congruent right angle triangles, so that means they're the same. So these four triangles are the same. And it shows a straight line. Then it says, the this is 15, this is 35, and the total length is 80. Work out the length EF, this length here. Give your answer to three significant figures. Okay, so they've obviously made it quite a complicated 
um, they've made a fairly straightforward question complicated, um, obviously to make sure you know what you're doing, but basically I'm gonna get this length here. This is the same as this, because they're all they're congruent triangles, which means they're the same. So if I get this length using Sokotoa, then I have all these lengths, and I just need to find out what's left to get me to 80, because the total length from here to here is 80. I'll call this Y. Okay, to find X, I'm gonna use Sokotoa. Sokotoa, I have the, um, let's write my so ka toa I have my um, adjacent and hypotenuse. I have the adjacent and the hypotenuse. This one has the two ticks, so it's cos. So the cosine of 35 degrees equals adjacent 15 over hypotenuse x. I know it's x because it's the one across, it's the biggest side. Um, okay, then I rearrange this, guys. We, need, we do need to know how to rearrange this. I'm gonna do x times cos 35 degrees equals 15, and then x equals 15 divided by cos 35. Just think of cos 35 is just like a number. So you can solve it the same way. Um, okay, so now I just do 15 divided by cos 35. Press enter, and I get 18.31. I'm going to do 312. So this is 18.312. That's x. Then I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4. Multiply by four, so four x equals this times four, this times four, which is 73.246, 73.246. Note, I always put a little bit more numbers down than in my working than they want for the, for the final answer. And that way I can't go wrong. So 44x, so this plus this plus this plus this is 73.246. Therefore, what's left for y, y equals 80, because the total is 80, minus the 73.246, which gives me um, 80 minus 73.246. Um, S to D, 6.754, 6.754, which is 6.75 to three significant figures. So 6 6.75, so this is 6.6. 6 Okay, question 14. Deep sat 11 tests. Each test was out of 60. Here are his results. Find the interquartile range and show your working clearly. Okay, so first, guys, to find the interquartile range, we have to arrange from smallest to biggest. So I'm going to go um, smallest is 35, and then I cross it out as I write it down. So 35, then 37, then 38, 37, then 38 cross those two out, then 39, then 41, 39, 41, 42, 43, 44, just be careful guys, you don't mess this up, um, so I do the 39, and the 41, the 42, the 43, the 44, there's a 45, and then two 47s. Okay, that's the same numbers rearranged from smallest to biggest. Now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven uh, numbers. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna pick the number in the middle is gonna be the median. So if there's eleven numbers, the middle is actually the sixth one. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the median. It's the middle because look, there's one, two, three, four, five to the right, one, two, three, four, five to the left. So this is the median. Median. To get the quartiles, you then 
essentially look to the left of the median, so these five numbers, and get the middle of these five numbers, like the median of the bottom half. That will give me Q1, the first quartile or the lower quartile. And the middle of these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is 45. That will give me Q2. So the interquartile range, the IQR as they call it, is 45 minus 38, which is 7. So this is 7. Okay. Sandeep also sat some tests in May. In May 2020, each test was marked out of 60. The median of the May 2020 results is this, and the interquartile range is 12. Okay, they often ask these questions. In which month, January or May, were Sandeep's test results more consistent? Right, so the consistency, and give a reason for your answer. The, consist, the interquartile range is actually... Um, it's actually a way, a nice way to measure consistency. So the smaller that is, the more consistent the grades are. For example, if they imagine he got um, thirty-five in all the te in all the, the tests, then the interquartile range would actually be zero because there's been no change at all. So they were they'd be extremely consistent. So a lower interquartile range, um, which was in this one which was january 2020 which january was more consistent um january so that's one mark but we need the reason i'm going to say as interquartile range is less for january january and you can then say seven is less than 12 if you want. Okay, that is question 14, question 15. Platinum nuggets are in the shape of a solid cylinder. So we have a cylinder, it gives us the radius and the, and the length. The density of platinum is this, and the greatest mass that Jacques can carry is 30 kilograms. Jack can carry five platinum. I'm sorry. Can Jack carry five platinum nuggets at the same time? You must show all your working. Okay, so this is quite a confusing question, guys. Um, but we have a cylinder, and we're dealing with um, volume and mass and density. So as soon as I see density, guys, I'm going to write down the density formula. This is not given in the formula sheet. Density equals. So you need to know it. One kind of nice way to to know the density formula is you actually if they give you the density this is it actually says look the density is 21.5 grams per centimeters cubed so grams is a, a measure of mass so it's mass per so it's over centimeters cubed which is a measure of volume so that is the density formula the formula for the volume of the cylinder is pi or squared h that is given in the formula sheet where h is the length in this case it's 15. so let's first get the volume and then we can use the density equals mass over volume formula so the volume of the um, cylinder is pi times pi times um, our bracket or squared 2.5 squared times h, which is 15, equals, okay, I've already done it, pi times 2.5 squared times 15 is 294.52. 294.52, is that what I said? Yeah, okay, so I have the volume of this. Then I'm going to use the density formula. Let's say d equals m over v now i have the density it gives it to me it's 21.5 i have the volume but i don't have the mass so the mass is actually what i'm trying to find so the mass is m over the volume 200 and sorry 294.52 
2. So the mass on its own is then this times this 200, or sorry, 21.5 times 294.52 um, equals on the calculator this times 21.5 which is this 6332.27 6332 point um sorry what did i say point two seven okay so that is the mass of um that is the mass of one uh one what is this nugget one platinum nugget but that's in grams be very careful 6,000 grams um, so the mass in kilograms is 6.332 I will round it because I'm going to be able to answer my questions if it's rounded 6.332 kilograms can Jacques carry five of these he can carry 30 kilograms at a time the answer is no because um, because 6.332 times 5 is going to be more than 30. I know that because 6 times 5 is 30, so definitely not. So I'm going to say 6.332 times 5 equals, let's, let's do it, um, 6.332 times 5 is this, 31.66, 31.66, Thirty-one point six six is greater than thirty, so it's too heavy. Therefore, three dots. Therefore, no, he cannot carry five platinum nuggets. Platinum nuggets. Okay, done. Question 16. Okay. A, B, C, D, E are points in a circle. Write down the size of um, E, B, C. E, B, C. This angle here, this is 40, guys. It is 40 because um, angles in the same segment. So in, it's angles in this segment here they are equal that is one of the the circle theorems so it's 40 degrees uh, reason angles in same segment are equal part b find the size of E D C angle E D C so that is E D C so guys this question is actually quite nice because this angle E D C here has to uh, add up to 180 with this angle here so it's 140 because opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral um, Add up to 180. Okay, so this is, and I don't even have to give a reason. Good, that is 140. Okay, question 17. Make n the subject of the formula. Okay, so I have an n squared underneath the line here. I don't want it there, I don't like it there. So I'm going to multiply both sides by n squared. n squared y equals, and on the right side, because this is one fraction, this n squared um, cancels or disappears, however you want to think about it, but I can write this. So I multiply, cross multiply, you may be familiar with that term, um, n squared y equals this. Fine, then I need to get any term with n squared in it on the left. So this one is already there, n squared y, fine. And this n squared here, I'm going to subtract it like this. So I have n squared y minus n squared equals d. Okay, 
then I need to isolate n squared. So I'm going to factorize n squared, take out n squared from both of these terms, open a bracket. If I factorize n squared from here, what's left? y. If I factorize n squared from here, what's left? 1 or negative 1 equals d. And therefore, finally, n squared equals d over, because I'm going to divide by this y minus 1. And that's the answer. n squared equals d over y minus 1. Oh no, sorry, that's not the answer, because that's that's n squared. I'm trying to find n. Sorry. So if that's n squared, um, to get n, I just get the square root. So it's the square root of d over y minus 1. Done. Okay, question 18. Complete the table of values, right? Guys, you can sub in the x's to get the y, or you can do it the quick way and let's face it better way of creating a table writing here a half x cubed minus 2x we're just writing it in plus 3 press enter g of x I don't have a g of x so we'll skip that I'm starting from negative 3 I'm starting from here I'm starting from negative 3 and I'm ending at three. And the step is one, because it's going up in ones. Press enter, and it gives me the table. So look, minus three is minus 4.5. Minus, uh, minus two is three, so this is three. Um, minus two is three, minus one is 4.5, 4.5. Um, This one, 0 is 3, that is given. 1 is 1.5, 2 is 3, and 3 is 10.5. So it's 1.5 and 10.5. I need to add in 1.5 and 10.5. Okay. Then he says, on the grid, draw this graph. So guys, this is an example of a, of a later question in the paper that anybody can do without a doubt if you have a calculator. So you just thought what I did there was easy, and now we're just going to put in these points. Minus 3, minus 4.5 is here. Minus 3, minus 4.5, right there. Try and be as accurate as possible. Minus 2, 3. So that's minus 2, 3, there. Um, minus 1, 4.5 is here, halfway between them. 0, 3 here, 1, 1 1.5 here, 2, 3 here, and 3, 10.5 there. Now this guy seems right to me because I know cubics and you should too. Cubics do, positive cubics kind of go up, not all of them, but in general they go up and then down and then up. They turn twice. Okay, guys, as I've said in previous videos, I struggle to draw these graphs with my particular pen, so you make sure you do it better than me. Make sure you go through all the points. Like this, and then, okay, that's not too bad, maybe just fix it here, but again, try and do it better than me, guys. It should go up nice and smooth through the points, turn, and up again. It shouldn't really be going backwards that way, it should be concave up, but that's fine for, for me. Okay, um, then it says, by drawing a suitable straight line on the grid, find an estimate for the solution of this, right? Now that, guys, this is a, a tricky question because our graph is um, y equals a half x cubed minus 2x plus 3. Let's write this down. y equals a half x cubed plus, um, sorry, half x cubed minus 2x plus 3. Minus 2x plus 3. 
minus 2x plus 3. Now this equation, and guys, when I said this uh, question 18 is a, is a question that everyone can do, that's I'm talking about part A and B. This part C is actually very hard. So this is the graph, to be clear. This blue thing, here's the graph. This one, I'll change the color, is their equation. It's a half x cubed minus x plus 4 equals 0. Now, my goal is to turn this into this. That way I can use the graph because he wants me to draw a straight line and, and then find the solution. So I'm going to turn this left side of my equation into this. How can I do it? Well, if I take away x, I'll get minus 2x. And if I take away 1, I'll get um, plus 3. So I'm going to subtract, I'm going to minus x, and I'm going to minus 1. Now, if this is an equation, look. So if I subtract x and subtract 1 from the left side of the equation, I have to subtract x and subtract 1 from the right of the equation which is going to give me a half x cubed, still half x cubed, minus 2x, because I subtract x, plus 3, because I subtract 1. Now I have this thing that I was trying to get. Equal 0 minus x minus 1 is just minus x minus 1. So this is, let me move it into the right place. This is now the line that I need to draw. I need to draw the line minus x minus 1, or y equals minus x minus 1. So let's actually write that here. Draw y equals minus x minus 1. So I'm going to draw that line. Now guys, some of you may just know how to draw y equals minus x minus 1. If you don't, you can do this table thing again. Just go menu, table, do minus x minus 1. Uh, skip that g of x, start at, um, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, but let's go minus 3 to 3, minus 3 to 3, step 1 is fine, and now it gives me the points, now, I don't even need to write out this table, but I just need two points, so I could go minus 3, 2, which is here, so let me use red, minus 3, 2 is there, minus 3, 2, and let's go 0, minus 1. I could choose any of these lines, guys. So my, uh, 0, minus 1, or sorry, any of these points. Because when I join them, I'll get a straight line, like this. And then the solution is where they meet. So they meet, and it's just 1x. So they meet when x equals minus 2.123 um, when x equals minus 2.3 x equals minus 2.3 um, the the mark scheme actually says it'll accept anything from minus 2.3 to minus 2.4 i haven't drawn my graph absolutely perfectly but that's uh yeah that's good enough minus 2.3 Let's say it's there. Okay, that's it. Right, as I said, guys, part C is tricky, but uh, parts A and B, definitely everyone can do it. Okay, question 19. A, B, C, D are points in a circle with center O and radius 12. The area of the sector O, A, D, C is 100 centimeters squared. So that's this sector here. Work out the size of angle A, B, C. So we're trying to find this angle. Okay, so guys, definitely look. This is one of these um, angles at the center. Or, sorry, the angle at the center is twice the size of the angle at the circumference. So this green angle is t double the blue angle. So once I find the green angle, and I'll find it using the sector um, area of a sector formula, I'll just half it and I'll get the, the blue angle. Okay, so how do I get this angle? So let's call this x and I can say that 
the area of a sector. So this is not in the formula booklet, guys, but the area of a sector is equal to the area of the circle, which is pi r squared, times the angle. The angle, actually, I'll call this uh, theta, guys, if you're okay with that, instead of x. Same thing, but just so I don't have times x, which I don't like. So times theta, so some angle, over 360, because that's the fraction of the circle, whatever angle that is here. So I have um, pi, I have r, it's 12, so it's pi times 12 squared. The theta I don't have, it's out of 360. And I know that this area equals 100 because it says it here. The area is 100. So this equals 100. So then to find theta, I just multiply by 360. So it's 360 times 100. And I divide by this 12 squared pi. 12 squared pi. So theta. Let's do it up here. Theta is equal to, so I'm going to go back here. I'm going to do 360 times 100 over 12 squared times pi. Um, shift and this for pi, right? So that's the, the very same as this, guys. Um, and it gives me 79.577. So that's 79.577. Therefore, three dots, angle, angle A, B, C is equal to two theta, which is equal to two of these. Um, so it's equal to two of those. So I'm just gonna do this times two is 159.15, 159.15, sorry, what am I doing? It's not equal to, I know I made a mistake there. It's far too big. But this angle is twice the size of this angle. So ABC is theta divided by two. Okay, so I need to divide this by two. So let's go back divide by two back to here, and I'm gonna divide by two again, and I get 39.7887, 39.7887. He says to three significant figures, so I'm gonna go with 39.8, one, two, third significant figure, and I round it up to eight. So 39.8 degrees, okay. Question 20. T is inversely proportional to m squared. Find a formula for T in terms of m. Okay, so proportional, uh, inversely proportional to m squared. That means T is, okay, I'll do the proportional. It's proportional to um, one over m squared. That's the proportional symbol. You can actually skip this step and go straight to T equals k over m squared if that's um if that if you prefer to go straight to that the m squared is at the bottom because it's proportional sorry because it's inversely proportional so we put it at the bottom okay then he tells us t is 30 when m is 0 0.5 so k over 0 0.5 squared i just sub in 30 and 0 0.5 Multiply across by 0 0.5 squared, so 30 times 0 0.5 squared, and k is equal to 30 times 0 0.5 squared is 7.5, exactly, 7.5, okay. Then I have to write, because it says write a formula for t, I have to write down t is equal to k over m squared, but it's 7.5 over m squared. Okay, that's part A. 
Then it says work out the value of t when m is 0 0.1. All I do is sub in 0 0.1 for m. So t is equal to 7.5 over 0 0.1 squared on the calculator. 7.5. 7.5 over 0 0.1 squared equals 750. 7.50. Okay. 21. Okay, so we have a histogram. Now remember for a histogram, guys, the um, frequency is the uh, area. So the frequency is the area. So it's going to be the class width times frequency density. Um, okay, 14. Let me actually write that down. Um, I'll write that here, guys. Frequency. Frequency equals class width times um, frequency density, let's just call it F, D. Okay, then it says the histogram gives information about the times in minutes some customers had to wait. Fine, 14 customers had to wait less than 10 minutes to be served. Okay, so 14 is the frequency. So be careful, 14 is the frequency and it says between are less than 10 so that's this class width so 14 is equal to the class width of 10 times frequency density fd which means fd is equal to 14 divided by 10 which is 1.4 okay so that means this height is 1.4 which tells me this is one so so two boxes two of the bigger boxes is one this is then two, three, four. Okay. It then says, work out the number of customers who had to wait less than 60 minutes to be served. And is that the only question? Yes, it is. Okay, so, well, less than 60 minutes, I basically need to add up or find the total area of all of these. Okay, so I'm going to do... Um, Okay, I'm going to do 10 times 1.4. So let me just write it over here, guys. Let's do 10 times 1.4 is 14. We know that one anyway. That's for this. Then this guy is 15 because this class width goes from 10 to 25. So that's 15. That's the class width. 15 times 3.2. Um, that is equal to 15 times 3.2, I should know that, but whatever, 3.2, 48. Then this one is just 5, so it's 5 times 3.6. 5 times 3.6 is 18. Use your calculator if you need to. This guy is 10 times 0 0.6, 10 times 0 0.6 which is 6 and then 20 times 0 0.2 so this length is 20 and the height is 0 0.2 which is actually equal to uh, 4 okay now the total is all of these added together total equals um add all these together i get 48 um let's do 48 58 68 78 uh, 78 88 82 90. um just add them up guys use your calculator if you need to 14 plus 48 plus 18 plus 6 plus 4 is equal to 90. Okay, question 21. Next, question 22. The curve with equation this and straight line this intersect at points A and B. Work out the exact length of AB. Show your working clearly 
and give your answer in this form, right? This, I was just thinking, guys, I haven't seen a difficult question yet. This paper has been quite nice, but I do know there's another um, four or five questions left. So maybe these are hard. I, I haven't actually seen them yet, but this one is hard for sure. Because first we're gonna have to solve this um, quadratic, or sorry, simultaneous equations when when they're not both linear. Then I have to get the length of a line and it's gonna involve some absurd manipulation. So this is a hard question, but let's do it. Firstly, x squared minus x plus y squared equals 10. Now, um, this equation, x minus y equals negative four. So using this equation, we can find either x or y and then sub it in to this. I think probably better off to find y, just because there's only one y squared here. Both would work fine. But if I then do x plus four, add this four, and then y here, so I'm adding y to both sides, I now have y equals x plus four. And then I'm gonna sub this into this. So here I have x squared minus x plus y, but instead of y, I'm gonna put x plus four. And it's this squared equals 10. Okay, then multiply out this bracket, x plus four times x plus four. If you wanna do it at the side, guys, x plus four times x plus four equals x squared, this times this is x squared, this times this is 4x, this times this is 4x, and this times this is 16, giving me x squared plus 8x plus 16. So this is x squared plus 8x plus 16, and all this equals to 10. Okay, now I'm gonna just simplify this, so it's 2x squared, x squared plus x squared, minus x plus 8x is plus 7x, 16 minus 10 is plus 6 equals 0. Okay, now I'm going to factorize this. Use your calculator if you need to, guys, but I, am, I think I can do it without a calculator. 2x and x, 3 and 2 plus and plus, this will give me my 4x plus 3x is 7x, which is what I wanted, three times two is six. So as always, guys, factorizing quadratics is one of those topics that um, the vast majority of students hate. So I've obviously done it very quickly. If you don't understand that, um, ask your teacher or go watch, go watch uh, a YouTube video. But this is the factors, or use your calculator, which I've kind of explained in previous past papers, to get the solutions and then work back. Okay, so here I have this equals zero. So the solutions are 2x plus 3 equals zero, and x, x plus... 2 equals 0. Then I have um, 2x equals negative 3, and x equals negative 3 over 2, and here x equals negative 2. So these are my two x-coordinates. Then if those are my two x-coordinates, I have over here um, x equals negative 3 over 2. If x equals negative 3 over 2, then y equals negative 3 over 2 plus 4, because it's x plus 4. For this x, we have x plus 4. Um, negative 3 over 2 plus 4, use your calculator if you want, guys, but it's 5 um, over 2, because it's negative 3 over 2 plus 8 over 2 is 5 over 2. And then for x equals negative 2, 
y is equal to negative 2 plus 4, because it's x plus 4 again, which is equal to 2. OK, and he wants the, the length of AB. So AB, the points are, so point A is minus 3 over 2, comma, um, 5 over 2. And B is negative 2, 2. OK, so these are my two points. And he wants to find the exact length of AB. Now you could say, how did I know this was A and this was B? Well, it doesn't matter. I could have called this one A and this one B. The length will be the same. So the magnitude, the length AB is equal to, I have to use my um, distance of a line formula. The distance of a line is x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. That comes from Pythagoras' theorem. Okay. And we use that when this is x1, y1, and this is x2, y2. So the length AB is equal to x1 minus x2, so minus 3 over 2 uh, minus minus 2, so be careful, minus negative 2 squared, like this plus y1, 5 over 2, minus y2 squared equals. Um, OK, I probably do want to put one more step of working before I just use my calculator. But minus 3 over 2 plus 4, this is 5 over 2, like the same reason as this. So this is. Um, sorry, what am I saying? It's minus 3 over 2 plus 4 over 2, which is 1 over 2. All right, so that is 1 over 2 squared plus this is um, 5 over 2 minus 2, which is 5 over 2 minus 4 over 2, which is 1 over 2 squared. Again, use your calculator, guys to get these if you're not good with fractions, which is equal to the square root of a quarter plus a quarter, because a half squared is a quarter, half squared is a quarter, which is equal to a quarter plus a quarter is a half, so it's the square root of a half. Okay, we're nearly finished. The square root of a half is equal to equals root 1 over root 2, because it's 1 over 2, I can do that, root 1 over root 2. And then finally, because he wants his answer in this form, root a over 2, I have to uh, multiply above and below by root 2, and it gives me root 2 over 2. Now guys, I did a lot of work there without my calculator just because, well, I'm quite comfortable with uh, fractions and roots and all that. But if you're not, it's there's not there's nothing wrong with going. Look, watch this. Square root of one over two equals root two over two. So go straight from here to here, and you can do that. That you you're not going to lose a mark for that for, for not showing that step. OK, that's, guys, first pretty difficult question. That was question 22. Question 23. OK, we have two points again. P and Q are two points. Coordinates of this and this. Find an equation of the perpendicular bisector PQ. Um, OK, not an easy question, guys, but this is what I call a familiar question. I know how to do this because I've practiced it. I know how to get the midpoint. I know how to get, get the gradient. I know, to, I know how to get the equation of the line. So. Let's write down that th these steps to get the so the perpendicular bisector first and foremost is if this is P and this is Q the perpendicular bisector is the line so this is a line that joins PQ the perpendicular bisector is a line that goes through let's try and draw it 
as accurately as possible. Okay, definitely not there, but let me move this. It goes through the middle, the middle of this line segment. So through the midpoint. So through here, I'm going to call that M. So I'm actually trying to find the equation of the green, or sorry, of the pink line. Now, how do I do it? Well, one, I get the midpoint, midpoint. Two, get the gradient. Um, I'll get the gradient of PQ, the line that goes through P and Q. Then three, get the gradient of perpendicular. That's my fancy perpendicular sign. And then finally, get the equation. Okay, so let's do one first. The midpoint, how do I get the midpoint? Well, midpoint is um, well, it's x1 plus x2 over 2, comma y1 plus y2 over 2. This is x1, y1, x1, y1, and this is x2, y2. So this plus this, minus 1 plus 5 over 2, comma, 6 minus 4, 6 minus 4 over 2, which is 4 over 2, which is 2, and 2 over 2, which is 1. Okay, so the midpoint, um, this m, the midpoint is 2, 1. Okay, then I'm going to get the gradient, the gradient m, little m, it's y2 minus y1, over x2 minus x1, change in y over change in x. Now I'm getting the gradient of the green line. Okay, y2 is negative four, y1 is six, y, oh sorry, x2 is five, x1 is negative one, so minus negative one, which equals negative 10 over six, or simplified negative five over three. Okay, that's the gradient of the green line. But step three is to find the gradient of the pink line. So if the gradient of the green line is um, negative five over three, the gradient of the pink line, or the, the perpendicular gradient, is three over five. It's the negative reciprocal. So I just flip this upside down and change the sign from negative to positive. Okay, then finally, step four is to get the equation of the line. So y equals mx plus c. Um, and then I'm going to sub in instead of x, I'm going to put two and instead of y, I'm going to put one. I have to use this point. I can't use either of these guys because those aren't on the pink line. This is the midpoint, which is on the, the pink line. So instead of y, I'm going to put uh, one instead of m, I'm going to put 3 over 5. And instead of x, I'm going to put 2. And instead of c, I'm just going to leave c because I'm going to try and find c. So 1 is equal to 6 over 5 plus c. And then c is equal to 1 minus 6 over 5, which is minus 1 over 5. Finally, I'm going to write, well, sorry, not finally, I'm going to write y equals mx, m, x, plus c, but instead of c, I'm going to put minus 1 over 5. And then finally, because he says, give your answer in this form, ax plus by plus c equals 0, where a, b, and c are integers, because he says in this form, I have to get rid of these fractions. I have to multiply across by 5. When I multiply everything by 5, I'll get 5y, as I multiply by 5. Multiply this by 5, just gets rid of the denominator. And multiply this by 5, also gets rid of the denominator. And then I need it all 
on one side to equal zero. So I'm going to leave the three x here. I'm going to subtract five x, and I'm going to leave the minus one equals zero, and that's it. That's the correct answer. Three x minus five x minus one equals zero. Okay, question twenty-four. Okay, write this in the form of this, where a, b is your integers. Okay, this is a completing the square question. So we're just rewriting the quadratic expression in a different form. Okay, first I'm going to show you the easy way to do this. There is an easy way, and then there's a really hard way, because this is actually is a very difficult one, because we've got a minus 3x squared, which I really don't like. Okay, um, the easy way, though, with this calculator, What's this? You can go menu, equation function, polynomial, degree two. Then we put in our minus three, be careful, because this is the, the x squared term, minus three, then 12, and then seven, equals zero. Press enter. He gives us the, the solutions, which aren't useful in this question. But then he gives me the max is two, and the sorry the, the x coordinate of the max is 2 and the y coordinate of the max is 19 so the max coordinates are at 2 19 if the max is at 2 19 that means that c has to be negative 2 and a has to be 19. So I can actually write this straight away. 7 plus 12x. I did say this was easy, guys. 3x squared equals a is 19. b has to be this number here, the negative 3. So it's actually going to be minus 3 because it has to be the number that comes before the x squared term. So these are always the same. And then the c will be the negative version of this. Now the reason for that is because what, va what value can you put in here to maximize this whole thing? Well, it's two, because this would all become zero, and then you'd be left with 19. Now, I know that's slightly confusing, but that's a nice easy way to do it. So that's the answer, 19 minus 3x minus 2 squared. Now, for those of you who don't have that calculator and or would like to know a kind of more algebraic method, let me show you right now. So we have um, 7 plus 12x minus 3x squared equals, I'm going to write this as negative 3 into x squared minus 4x plus 7. So what have I done? I've taken out the minus 3 here, uh, out of here and here. So I now have minus 3x squared. And if I was to multiply this and this, I'd get plus 12x. OK, then I complete the square with this bit here. So I'm going to bring in a square bracket. I'm going to do x minus 2, I half this. And obviously, guys, if you've never seen this before, you're going to be very, very lost. So, um, well, go and learn how to, how to do this. But um, yeah, we half this, then we square it. Then we subtract 4. We always subtract this squared. Close the square bracket, plus 7 then multiply out the 3, so it's going to be negative 3, x minus 2 squared, plus 12, because minus 3 times minus 4 is plus 12, and then the plus 7 at the end, and this gives us minus 3 times x minus 2 squared plus 19, which is this. Okay, so... Um, yeah, this is fine, guys. And you should get, now I don't say definitely because I know they do change 
from mark scheme to mark scheme but you should be able to get full marks if you just write this down like this however if you want to know the kind of more uh, algebraic way of doing it and if you don't have one of those calculators this is the method and yes it's hard okay the curve c has equation this the point a is, is the turning point on c use your answer to part a uh, to write down the coordinates of a okay so we've already got that look it's this it's the 219 so that's the whole point of completing the square and um, this form tells us where the turning point is you can straight away go it's uh, negative this or 2 uh, positive this 19 okay question 25 Okay, full disclosure, this is a very, very difficult question. So we have this, and it says, O8 AN is one to four, O M to MP is one to one. So this to this, O A, sorry, O A to A N is one to four, the ratio, the lengths are in this ratio, and O M to M B are in the ratio one to one. So M is the midpoint. Now he gives us, um, OA is 2A, so from here to here, this is 2A, from o, o to A. And he says it's in the ratio 1 to 4, so this has to be 8A, because it's 4 times bigger than that. And OM is, OM to MB is 1 to 1, and this whole thing is 2B, which means this, from here to here, from here to here is B, and here to here is B, because they have to be the same, and the full thing is 2B. Okay, then it says, using a, using a vector method, find the ratio AP to PB. Give your answer in its simplest form. Okay, so we are going to, um, we are going to, well, we need to get the ratio AP to PB. So we're dealing with this vector here. And this, it's not halfway by the way, but this vector here, AP, let's call it, let's just draw a line here, AP, this green vector, is some fraction of AB, of the whole thing. Now let's call it, let's call it a fraction, um, I'm going to use lambda. Often for vectors, guys, we use lambda, the Greek letters lambda and mu, and sometimes t. So this vector is lambda is the fraction of the full thing. For example, lambda might be, um, if it was a half, lambda would be a half. If it was a quarter, lambda would be a quarter. Okay, so it's lambda. I don't know what it is. Now, I'm going to find this vector AP. Okay, AP is AP is um, half of AB. So I'm going to write up here guys and, and here, but obviously you write down here. I just want to make sure I keep this image in the screen. So, okay, firstly, I'm going to write AB. What is AB? Vector AB. Well, to get from A to B, I can go minus 2A plus 2B. So AB is minus 2A plus 2B, which means AP, AP is lambda times AB. So it's lambda, it's this, whatever this fraction is, it's lambda times minus 2A plus 2b, or minus 2 lambda a plus 2 lambda b. Okay, that is AP. And that's AP if I go straight across from here to here. I'm also going to, um, I'm also going to go from A to P this direction. I'm going to go from A to this and then this 
to p. Now, in order to do that, I need to find n m. Okay, so n m. That is this vector across here is equal to if I want to go this way, I'm going to go minus 10 a minus 10 a because I'm going minus 8 minus 2 plus b. So n m is minus 10 a plus b and n p is n p is equal to now similarly to the way I called a p lambda I'm going to call this mu and I'm going to say n p is I'm going to say n p is mu times n m it's some fraction of the big vector n m so n p is um, mu times minus 10 a plus uh, sorry minus 10 a plus b because it's mu times this n m okay now I can say a p a p is also equal to 8 a so I'm going to go this way now 8 a plus my mu times plus mu times minus 10 a plus b like this which is equal to um 8 a minus 10 mu a plus mu b or 8 minus 10 mu a plus mu b. Okay, now the whole point of what I'm doing here, obviously we're trying to get this, what fraction is this um, ap of the full thing. But the reason I've gone this way and this way is because if I can get ap in two different uh in two different directions or going two different ways like this and this two different methods I can then equate them because this has to equal this and even more so the let me um, highlight this for us the a part minus 2 lambda a has to equal this part so minus 2 lambda has to equal 8 minus 10 mu. Let's write that down. Minus 2 lambda. And my goal now, guys, is to find... Well, lambda isn't the answer, but once I find lambda, I'll be able to find the ratio. So minus 2 lambda equals 8 minus 10 mu. And similarly... Um, I'm missing my favorite color. Okay, similarly, the b's, the coefficient of b, 2 lambda, has to equal mu. Because the a part of this has to equal the a part of this, and the b part of this has to equal the b part of this one. So that is because the a and the b, the little a and the little b, they are the vectors. So minus 2 lambda equals 8 minus 10 mu, and... 2 lambda, let's do another one over here, 2 lambda equals mu. So I now have two equations with two unknowns. I can sub, I'm going to use substitution, I'm going to now, instead of mu here, I'm going to substitute 2 lambda. So I'm going to put this 2 lambda into here. So minus 2 lambda, this is the same equals 8, that's the same, minus 10, that's the same, and instead of mu, I'm putting 2 lambda there. Okay, multiply out, minus 2 lambda equals 8 minus 20 lambda, 
sorry, 20 lambda. Um, add 20 lambda to this side, I get 18 lambda equals 8, and I get lambda equals 8 over 18 divided by 2, uh, 4 over 9. Okay, very nearly finished. I, I told you this was hard, guys. So if this lambda is 4 ninths, so that means this green part is 4 ninths the total distance from A to B, which means um, this distance has to be, oh guys, let me, um, let me just use blue. This distance has to be 5 ninths of AB. So this is 4 ninths, this is 5 ninths. The question says, what's the ratio of AP to PB? Well, it's 4 to 5. That's the ratio. So therefore, AP to PB equals 4 to 5. And the ratio is, I'll write it down here. Well, actually, look how much space they've given us, guys. 4 to 5. Five mark question. Obviously, very difficult. Okay. Question 26. So we have a circle and we have um, we've chords, the chords of the circle, two chords here, and they are extended out to part, point C where they intersect. This is called the um, external intersecting chord theorem. Well, that's the theorem that we're going to use. Now, the theorem states, let me just write this up here so we're all clear. The theorem states that um, the length uh, CB times CA, so this times this, equals CD times C. E. Okay, that's a theorem. Well, it's one of the circle theorems that you just need to know, right? When you have two chords, this is a chord, and you extend it so that they meet, then you can apply this. CD times CE equals CB times CA. Obviously, the letters are can be whatever they are. It's just this to this. So the intersecting point to the circumference times the intersecting point to the other circumference equals this times this. Okay, so that's the first thing. Then obviously we're gonna to have to use thirds and stuff, so it's gonna get tricky, but let's, uh, let's apply what we've said. So again, I'm gonna write here, guys, just so we have space, but you obviously write down here. We need to show that the length of AB is this, where P and Q are integers whose values are to be found. So it's basically saying, uh, the answer is going to look something like this, find P and Q. But, um, sorry, yeah, we're trying to find this length here, AB. So let's call it X. So I can say CB. CB is 2 plus root 5. That's this. Times CA. Sorry, hang on. Let me do that again. I'm going to go this times this. I'm going to start with the C, yeah, the CB. Um, 2 plus root 5 CB times CA. Now this is 2 plus root 5 plus X because the total length from C to A is 2 plus root 5 plus X. So I've added in the x. Now this equals this cd, which is 2 root 5, times times 2 root 5 plus 4 plus root 5. Now again, why have I done that? Well, because this total length is 2 root 5 plus 4 plus root 5. So 
This equation is this. It's CB. Let me do it like this. CB is this times CA, which is this, equals 2 root 5, which is this, times CE, which is this. Okay, yellow times orange equals green times pink. Okay, now we just have a very difficult um, a very difficult third problem that we need to solve, right? First, I'm going to simplify this guys to 2 plus root 5, and with the goal of finding x. So 2 plus root 5, 2 plus root 5 plus x equals 2 root 5. I just want to simplify this pink one. 2 root 5 plus 4 plus root 5 is 4 plus 3 root 5, because this is 2 root 5 plus 1 root 5 is 3 root 5. Okay, then I am going to do, I'm going to multiply this by this. So to do that, I have three terms here and two terms here. I'm just going to do the first times the first, the first times the second, the first times the third, the second times the first, the second times the second, and the second times the third. So I'm going to have two times two, I'm going to write down here, is four. 2 times root 5 is 2 root 5. 2 times x is 2x. Root 5 times 2 is 2 root 5. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. And root 5 times x is root 5x. Equals. Now I do this times, well, this one's easy. It's just this times this and this times this. So 2 root 5 times 4 is 8 root 5. 8 root 5. And 2 root 5 times this. I do 2 times 3 is 6. And root 5 times root 5 is 5. And 5 times 6 is 30. So this times this is 30. But guys, if that's confusing, use your calculator. Although I would argue if you're able to do this question, you should be comfortable with that. Um, six times five. Okay, now I'm going to get the uh, all the terms with x, all the terms with x in it. I'm going to leave on the right side of the equation. So I have two x plus root five x, and this is going to equal. I'm going to now subtract. Um, the rest actually sorry guys before i do that let's just simplify this so I, I can do my 4 plus 5 is 9 my 2 root 5 plus 2 root 5 is 4 root 5 and my 2x plus root 5x is there this equals 8 root 5 plus 30. Now I'm going to subtract the 9 and the 4 root 5. So I have 2x plus root 5x, leave these two here, equals 8 root 5 plus 30. And then I'm going to subtract these. So minus 9 and minus 4 root 5. This gives us 2x plus root 5x equals 8 root 5 minus 4 root 5 is 4 root 5, because 8 minus 4 is 4, and 30 minus 9 is 21. Okay, nearly there, but he wants it in this form, guys. He wants it um, p root 5 plus q. So I'm going to move down to here. Next step, I'm going to factorize out the x because I need to get x on its own. So I have x into 2 plus root 5 factorizing the x equals 4 root 5 plus 21. Finally, well not finally, I do 4 root 5 plus 21 divided by 2 
plus root 5. Now, if you've got this far, guys, well done. Because this is harder. Let me just check how many marks this question is. Five marks. Um, well done if you've got this far. But because he wants it in this form, I have to, what we call, rationalize the denominator. So I have to say x equals 4 root 5 plus 21 over 2 plus root 5. And the way we rationalize a denominator is we multiply above and below by 2 minus root 5. So 2 minus root 5. Whatever this is, we change the sign and we multiply by what we call the conjugate. Okay. So now I do. I'm going to do the top times the top. So I'm going to do 4 root 5 times 2 is 8 root 5. 4 root 5 times minus 5 is minus 20. You can use your calculator for that. So I've done this times this, this times this. Um, it's minus 20 because minus is here and 4 times 5 is 20. Use your calculator. Then I have to do 21 times 2 is 42. So it's plus 42. And 21 times minus root 5 is minus 21 root 5. Then, that's the numerator. The denominator, I do 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times minus root 5 is minus 2 root 5. Root 5 times 2 is plus 2 root 5. And minus root 5 times minus root 5 is minus 5. Okay, very nearly finished. I have... Um, I have 8 root 5 minus 21 root 5 is minus 13 root 5. Minus 20 plus uh, minus 20 plus 42 is plus 22. And then the denominator is, and this is why you multiply by the conjugate, these two cancel, and it's just 4 minus 5 is minus 1. And then finally, actually finally this time, because I'm divided by minus 1, I can change this into uh, 13 root 5, because minus over minus is positive, and positive over minus is minus 22. And that, thankfully, so I don't have to do it again, is the correct answer. Now, guys, that is obviously really, really difficult. That's one of the harder third questions I've ever seen. Um, the previous question was really hard, but I think overall the, the paper wasn't too bad. It just had two killer questions at the end, but overall it wasn't a bad paper. Okay, that's it, guys. There's space there for you to do your working. Um, that's question 26 and that is the paper so i'll see you for the next i'll see you in the next paper